Hello everyone and welcome back. I'm Mario and in this video uh, I just want to share some of the tips or best practices you can use into your workflow uh, to improve either the workflow or just the modeling skills in general. Uh, in addition I just want to send out a huge thanks for all the support on the channel and the previous videos. Uh, that means a ton. Uh, and also if you're interested for more in-depth and more interactive training uh, feel free to check on uh, my masterclass and the link is going to be in the description or right below the video. So like always, thanks again and let's get into this. All right, so uh, let's begin with start simple and keep it simple. Uh, here, our general focus is going to be mainly on very, very simple shapes. Uh, we're not going to go into anything complex in the beginning. So uh, also if you decide to break down, so if you're not sure what to model in the beginning, uh, even complex forms, if, to, if you break them down, they are always going to have that small pieces uh, that are combined together and then that is kind of that feel of complexity um, but in the beginning we're gonna probably stick to something very very simple and that's what I mean very very singular that doesn't have any additional pieces attached to it so again this is a very very singular piece uh, you can then go through the complete workflow that much faster so you're not uh, that much focusing on what's happening all around you're just focusing on this one part and then you can go to uh, through the whole workflow uh, from beginning till the end that much faster. So you go through the block out phase, uh, refinement, details. I don't know if you're still learning the tools. Uh, when you have small pieces like this, you can just simply practice the tools, uh, practice the topology, let's say adding primary, secondary shapes, panel breaks, adding these minor details, just to see how the topology performs, how the tools perform and how everything kind of flows. And then in a short amount of time, you're going to that 3D modeling workflow, like blockout proportions, fine tuning details, and so on. So this is going to be the benefit of uh, working on a simple object and really keeping it simple and not going too much uh, into the details or adding so many complexity uh, at the very, very start. Uh, also, on the other hand, if we start, let's say, too early with complex designs, uh, what can happen is that we get maybe too obsessed or distracted uh, with the topology that we lose focus on what we're actually creating and then um, the projects in general can last very, very long um, then we maybe also get frustrated along the way so part of the reason why in the beginning I would definitely recommend sticking to creating something very very simple practicing on simple uh, projects and then later you're just going to combine those simple stuff into more and more complex so this is going to be more or less that um, natural workflow Next up, we're going to have topology practice or topology drills. So practicing edge flows and topology forms on a very, very simple object. So even if you find something that is looking complex, you can just take that part, uh, simplify it, and then this now becomes your topology practice. And here, now you can explore different uh, topological workflows depending on the edge flow, uh, edge redirection, uh, structure density you can just explore everything and see what holds the shape what uh, workflows are optimal what topology is optimal for the shapes in the future so uh, here you're kind of building that muscle memory or reflexes for the future projects where you need to solve topology on the spot and you don't need to think that much so basically when you come to this area you're not too much concerned about the topology because you already drilled everything out and you're already familiar how everything works. So in a way, this is also kind of like a small skill check where you can just see what is your current topology understanding. So if you notice uh, that you're struggling on these uh, little exercises a lot, uh, the chances are you're also going to struggle a lot on something that comes later and it's much more complex. So if you notice that you're struggling with these parts, just take the time and do as many as these as you can. You can just drill those out and build those uh, in a way, not just topology reflexes, but along the way, I'm pretty sure that you also pick up a lot of, let's say, uh, hotkeys or different tools might feel a bit more familiar and so on. So this is again going to be sort of like anatomy for hard surface. Uh, next up, we're gonna have case studies. So similar to topology studies, uh, let's say that we are working on a robot, but we are not sure how to model the hands. So before even starting to work on a robot, we're gonna do case studies of only hands. So how to model only hands, because let's say that we already started to work on a robot, then now we come to the hand part and we never did that. So now we kind of hit the ceiling where we are limited with our experience and then the hands that we do on our current project might feel off because let's say if you do that case study you're going to notice that first time uh, that 
proportions, topology, something will fill off. So you don't want to uh, put yourself into that spot where you already come to already existing project and now you need to uh, solve that. Uh, so just to be prepared in that case, we again are going to do this little small studies. So just to uh, showcase this on a very, very simple example, uh, let's say that this little detail, I'm not sure how to do this detail, so I'm just going to take a screenshot, uh, highlight it and post in forums and ask somebody how to do this and that they show me the topology. So uh, instead, what we can do also is just isolate this part on a simple cube like this and then try to practice and see, let's say if we practice already this part, now it's going to be much more easier to implement everything we learned there to this part right here. So now we just need to see, let's say, what not just topology would fit, but what would be the most optimal workflow, what would be the most optimal base to begin with, and let's say which corner is, uh, which edge flow is giving us sharper corner, which edge flow is giving us a uh, smoother corner, uh, when uh, to redirect some of the topology, let's say if we want to redirect or if we are limited by the, by the edge count, let me isolate this. Uh, let's say that we are limited by the edge count and here we need this count and here we need that count. So that's where we practice redirection and whatnot. So again, this would be that approach to uh, the case studies on the very, very, uh, let's say basic objects that you're not sure what the approach was. So taking again something that it's unfamiliar and making it familiar, you know, step by step. And then later, same like in the case of uh, robot hand, by the time you come to the modeling the robot hand, you're already familiar with it because you already did, let's say, a lot of case studies on how to do uh, robotic hands. All right, so uh, the next one on the list is going to be more or less obvious, but I want to mention it anyway, and that is references, references, and a lot more references. So uh, whatever you're trying to model, just make sure that you arm yourself with a lot of images and a lot of videos uh, from every possible angle, even the smallest details if you can. Uh, also, huge plus would be if you have the opportunity just to go out into the real world and take the photos yourself, uh, because that way you're going to get the sense of scale, sense of proportion, and most importantly, sense of weight. Just while you modeling that you know let's say this is going to be a very very heavy piece or this is going to be a very light piece so i need to be careful about my beveling this or that so this is going to be also very very huge plus so in short just make sure to have a lot a lot of references next one on our list is going to be proportion study and blockouts so uh, this is usually something that comes right after the topology study because it's kind of uh, closely connected uh, but let's say that this is the reference of whatever we are trying to model and now I just want to practice the proportions. I just want to see that I get those proportions right. So sometimes it can happen that the first time when I, let's say, do the study that uh, I'm too obsessed with the tool. So I'm using the extrusion, I'm using the scale. So I'm not really too much following my reference or even worse, I'm just too much later uh, down the line into the topology. I'm just too obsessed with the topology and I just lose the track of how everything is looking and then my proportions are totally off. So that's why it's very important to have the block out uh, as close as possible to the reference. Some parts probably can be adjusted later down the line, but just to get those uh, general proportions or the general feel for where things are or where things should be. Later down the line, that will be much, much easier to, uh, let's, let's, let's say, adjust or implementing the workflow. So you don't have to go further than this. Just if you see something, let's say you want to model, uh, just drill out a couple of blockouts here and see maybe which one fits the best, uh, which proportion fit the best, which forms fit the best, which one would be, let's say more, uh, let's say topology appropriate later when you start building more and more details. So this is going to be very, very also important part. So doing a lot of blockouts, uh, just for the sense of where things are. It doesn't have to be like super precise, but just to get that feel where something is. So again, in short, a uh, blockout is going to be a way to establish that initial form, and then we'll build everything else on top, like panel breaks, uh, details, primary, secondary shapes, and whatnot. All right, so this one uh, also might sound obvious, but I feel it's also kind of uh, overlooked in many situations, and that is do not be afraid of repetition. Uh, because what happens is, let's say that we are trying to model this part right here, is that the camera is always zoomed in. So especially if you're, let's say, dealing with topology, always zooming in and trying to fix things, redirect stuff. And what happens is that once you compare it to the final thing, so let's say you are now doing these 
uh, objects and when you compare it to the reference, you're going to see that it's a lot of stuff maybe went off. So in that case, I would definitely recommend if you can to do two more, one at least or two more tries, because in the second try, you're probably going to now have more focus on things that were not uh, in primary focus on the first time. So first time, let's say topology was primary focus, so everything else is kind of off. So now in the second attempt, uh, we're already familiar with the topology flow. We know how, where everything is. We just need to implement this more into the proportions. And then the third one is going to be that final polished one where you already have sort of like established workflow. You know how everything is and you're just going through the workflow more naturally because now you're prepared, you're familiar with both topology and proportions and you can actually now focus on aesthetics and add more fine-tuned details and whatnot and this is the version that it's usually uh, your final and polished version. Uh, we're gonna have one more which again might sound very obvious but I want to mention it anyway uh, that is save often and be open to changes. So save often in terms that uh, let's say we're working on a camera project and uh, ideally we want to create a save after every major change or at least 20-30 minutes, 20-30 uh, minute interval. So let's say that this is a blockout, this is going to be our first save, uh, then the refinement or supportive loops let's say will be a second save, uh, then primary forms will be a third save and so on and so on. So it's very important that after every major change uh, we create a save because what can happen is, for example, uh, we're not satisfied with the specific part or the a client uh, requests something to be changed you always have that point to return to and you don't have to retrace everything and redo everything from scratch so for example if i'm not satisfied with how this panel break looks i can always load the save before uh, the panel breaks was made and then just redo or uh, fix the panel break so it's always going to be uh, a place in time where I can return to without actually starting everything from scratch. This again kind of closely connected to uh, being open to changes uh, because sometimes what can happen is that we get uh, too attached to the designs that we did or the parts of design that we did on the expense of the general picture. So for example, uh, let's say that we struggle a lot to do the topology around this area but everything around this area actually sucks. So uh, now the question is what to do do i really need to start all over because i really struggled a lot here and the only way to fix it all i need to start from the beginning so in that case it's just going to be better to start from the beginning and because it's going to be a great practice uh, and you're going to end up with much more polished uh, result and also one important thing i would like to mention is that if you notice that something is off with your either designs or your models chances are uh, others will notice too so just keep that in mind and whatever you have the chance uh, and you feel that something can be improved, just feel free to do that. You can always, like I mentioned, uh, keep copies. So even if you, let's say, do something that you don't like, but you like the part of it, uh, you can create a new save from that and start uh, from scratch and maybe reuse some of the parts. But the most important thing is just not to get too attached to either parts of your design or the design in general and simply be open to changes and when there is a room to improve feel free to take the time to improve on that so yeah this covers it for this video uh, thank you very much for watching and i'm going to see you next time